The military records of the two men running for president have become part of the political arsenal in this campaign. Tonight, we have new documents and new information on the president's military service. We want to dare to be great. But when you do that, some of these stories are going to be handling hot lead, handling something very volatile, very difficult. My name is Mary Mapes. I was a producer at CBS for 15 years. Or as Dan and I say, I was there for 15 years and wonderful years and five terrible months. In today's world, in the, in the internet era, as we move deeper in the 21st century, what is the definition of truth? Have we changed the very definition of truth? I hope and pray we have not. I sat at home and I wanted a chance to explain myself, to explain the work my team and I had done and I wanted people to understand that the story that they'd heard was really not what had happened, that there was much more to it. I think whatever one's political leanings or ideological beliefs, if we all agree, we need to settle on a definition of truth. This was not just about us. This was about issues much larger than us. This was about truth. Now tell me the truth, and the whole truth, about what happened with George W. Bush and the draft in the National Guard. Of course you're going to put yourself at risk telling the truth, because particularly when truth goes against power, you know, power tries to crush the truth. And if you're committed to trying to get the truth out, then your job is going to be at risk, you're going to be at risk. But for me, I think risk is essential to progress. ABC is reaching out to two of our examiners, Emily Will and Linda James. They say they never authenticated the memos. Mary talks about whose truth, my truth, your truth, but I do think that there are certain facts that are immutable. The thing I most want people to know about this is they did not deny the basic facts of the story, and they could not deny that. The basic facts are George W. Bush used his family connections to get into the National Guard and avoid Vietnam, and f for some reason, much of the press in our country really gave him a pass on that. Those who, who didn't want the facts to become widely known, chose to attack the process by which we got to the facts. Now that's fair enough, but you're entitled to your own opinion, but you're not entitled to your own facts. Our story was about whether Bush's connections got him into the guard and covered for him when he missed his commitments, and every bit of research we found backs that up. Now the documents, they were just a small part of it. They were not the point of the story. It doesn't matter what the point of the story was. We had to stop they bleeding. They do not get to do this. In the larger context, it's not about President Bush, it's not about me, it's not about Mary Mapes, it's not about the documents. It's about this larger question of the integrity of the news. I regret what happened, but I don't regret being who I was in this story, or, or Dan doesn't regret, I believe, being who he was in this story. I, I did what I thought was ethically right, and um, I still think I did that. From her perspective, they would stand up in a court of law and that before the story had even finished airing, there were already bloggers commenting that these documents were not accurate. All these new channels of information that come pouring in can get really complicated because you wonder where the truth is. Arthur Wilde wrote that the truth is rarely pure and never simple. It's part of the education of every journalist worthy of the name. And so it was with this story. So while what happened to George W. Bush and didn't happen to him in the service, what happened to Mary Mapes, what happened to Dan, rather. These are threads running through a much larger story. Did you know that 60 Minutes was the first news program to ever make money? You know, when the government gave the networks the airwaves, it was with a stipulation that they'd be used in some capacity for the public good. That, that was the news. So much has changed, but what hasn't changed about news are the fundamentals. And the fundamentals begin with, you know, what is news? And one definition of news to which I have long subscribed and Mary Mape subscribes is that news is something that people need to know, that someone somewhere, especially some powerful someone somewhere, does not want the people to know.
they made their money elsewhere on the on the schedule. But reporting the news was a duty. It was it was a trust. When money came in, when money became not just everything, the only thing, so much changed because of that. Entertainment values came to almost completely overwhelm news values. This is not just a journalism argument. This is important for people to understand. Yes, it's a business. Yes, it's expected to make money. But in many important ways, and for at least some of the time, we're going to operate in the public interest and see news as a public trust. And that was the spirit of electronic journalism in the, our beloved United States. In the old days, when I was a kid growing up, there was four channels, and that was it. And each of the channels had an anchor that told you the news. And every night, they would face you straight away, and very simply. There, were, there was no personality involved. Nobody was acting out anything. They just gave it to you straight. And so you trusted what you were being told. What this movie is about is about what's happened to the news what's happened to news reporting, what's happened to journalism, and why you should care, why it matters. Are we or are we not going to have news that's in the public interest? Or are we gonna slip deeper and deeper into what's called, quote, news, that is in very large measure, propagandas, lies, or if not lies, deep into sophistry. There are so many stories that need to be told, you know, for our own safety, for our own, the getting of our own wisdom about who we are and what we're doing. And um, I want people to think about what we want journalism to be and what those of us outside of it can do to, to make it what it needs to be. There are a lot of young people today who don't pay any attention to what might be called traditional media because they write it off. They say, listen, it's all lies, propaganda. They've lost the trust in it. And that counts greatly for democratic societies. What about this, uh, uh, O-E-T-R? What does that stand for? Officer Effectiveness Training Report. Well, actually, the correct acronym is O-E-R, Officer Effectiveness Report. Isn't it true, Mary, that officer effectiveness training report doesn't actually appear anywhere in any official document, and that this is a phrase that you created to explain this incorrect abbreviation in your memos? That is not true. It isn't? I would not do something like that. Then prove it. Words matter. Uh, Mark Twain said the difference between the right word and the almost right word is the difference between lightning and lightning bug. Official document, top of the page. Right. Yes. Oh. We have lost the ability, I think, journalistically in this country to question, to ask questions, just to keep asking questions. Because we're owned, so many of us, by corporate folks, stories became rather gimmicky. I mean, why go to the trouble of breaking news when all you have to do is just talk about other people breaking news, huh? There wasn't a, a conflicting zillion other opinions coming at the same time. Now it's different. You really do have to be so thorough when you are researching anything because rumor very quickly becomes some so-called fact. I'm so naive, I only realized recently that the Wikipedia pages can be changed willy-nilly. In this whole not so brave new world of the internet and of the power of big governments and big business, I think it's clouded what is truth. I think it's probably time to redefine the word truth because it's so full of shades of grey now. We know it's not safe to ask certain questions. We know the politics of the moment may make it unsafe to ask a question or it'll be unsafe for your career if you stick your neck out that way. And I want, I want regular people to know that there are journalists out there who do that, who need to do that, and we need to encourage them to do that in every way we can by demanding really a higher level of journalism and investigative work. Journalism at its best is most often a very collaborative process. And at CBS News, an institution that had, I put it in the past tense because I haven't been there in 10 years, but had a very strong tradition that you tried to be great. 
You wanted to do excellent work, not just good work, but excellent work. It was a, a group of people trying to work together to do the best they could, and we had fabulous, fabulous people there. But you saw over the years them being undermined, their work being undermined by corporate decisions, political choices, doing the safe thing, doing the profitable thing. To try to be great, dare to be great, it would take a team effort. And the team, you went into stories together, you stayed tightly together during the reporting of the stories, and whatever happened, you came out the other end uh, together. Thank you to the thousands of wonderful professionals at CBS News, past and present, with whom it's been my honor to work over these years. And a deeply felt thanks to all of you who've let us into your homes night after night. It's been a privilege, and one never taken lightly. To my fellow journalists, in places where reporting the truth means risking all. And to each of you, courage. For the CBS Evening News, Dan Rather reporting. Good night.